that never gets old. But what does get old is the tech that's in your Tesla. Tesla Canuck, welcome back to another video. This is a 2017 Tesla Model X, and up until very recently, it had MCU1, like a lot of other 2017, 2018 Model Xs and Model Ss. And what that means is that it has a very old uh, processor, a chip, that is controlling all of your media stuff. So everything in that center screen, it affects the way your maps load, it affects the features that Tesla can deliver to your vehicle, such as Netflix or lack thereof. Uh, so basically, I got fed up with MCU1 because it was just getting too slow. Now I do want to give Tesla some props though because they have squeezed absolutely everything they can out of a chip that I think came out in, I want to say 2011. I remember having a Tegra K1 uh, chip in my, in like a really early Chromebook and the performance sucked. So kudos to Tesla for doing what they did with MCU1, but for me, I'm done with it, too slow, got the MCU2 upgrade. Before we go too far down the path, let's just take a look at a short clip to show you what life with MCU1 was like. Let's talk about the reason why I'm going to spend 3300 Canadian dollars today plus tax on the MCU2 upgrade. Well, it comes down to everything is just slow and some things don't work now with MCU1. I think it's just completely overloaded uh, in terms of the CPU and the memory and all those type of things. So, for example, let's take a look at voice commands. Navigate to CN Tower. Okay, so that actually worked pretty well. Uh, normally it's slow as molasses uh, with the voice command. So who figured? I mean, I'm at Tesla now. It's like working pretty well. But you can see the maps are taking forever to load. In my Model 3, when I put in uh, an address like that by voice, it's within seconds it's completed doing the calculations and giving me my route. And we can see here that it's still calculating. Okay, it's finally done. This was actually fast compared to um, sometimes it it's, could be minutes while you're waiting for it to calculate. So navigating, I mean, everything is, um, you know, it's just, it's just not snappy, right? Like trying to deal with the maps and, and loading and it's just... After a while, as, as an owner, you just get a little bit frustrated that it's so slow because it does impact your driving experience, at least in my opinion. So, and also too, it's from a features perspective. So uh, with MCU1, you don't get a lot of the entertainment options. So I'll just click on this quickly. You don't get any of your theater stuff. So there's no Netflix, uh, nothing like that. You don't get the good games. <laughs> well, some of these are okay. Um, but things like, uh, you know, the beach buggy one, for example, I, I don't think you get Cuphead here either. So there's a lot of reasons to do this. We've decided we're going to keep the Model X for a while. So in terms of this investment, um, I'm not so concerned about it. Uh, you know, if I was planning on getting rid of the car next year, I wouldn't spend this money on it. But um, we're going to have it for the next three years, probably. And I'm not putting up with MCU1 anymore. First, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the settings. And we're going to see what is new in the settings. Uh, then we're going to take a look at the features and functions that you get new with MCU2. And we're going to look at the fluidity of the screen, all that kind of good stuff. So let's uh, dive in. So first up here, let's take a look through the settings. In the quick controls, I don't see anything different. MCU2, suspension. Now, I don't know if this is um, an MCU2 thing because I know there was a recent release where this part of the settings was revamped and you can see the actual ride height in centimeters in my case or whatever, you know, if you use an imperial system in the US, whatever it is, you would see inches, I would imagine. Um, so I, I don't think this is an MCU2 thing. I think this also came to MCU1, but do let me uh, know in the comments if, uh, if that's incorrect. I don't see any difference here in the lights menu. Driving, driving looks pretty much the same. Autopilot, 
There is one thing that I did notice that was different after MCU 2 is this menu item here for full self-driving visualization uh, preview. Previous, I'm pretty sure it was just the traffic light and stop sign control beta. Um, and the visualizations, you did see the traffic lights and the stop signs, but with MCU 1, you didn't see things like, like traffic cones or garbage cans or any of the other visualizations that you get with the MCU 2. And this was actually toggled off after the MCU 2 upgrade, so I had to toggle it on. So I'm pretty sure that is new. I don't think there's anything else in, this, in the autopilot section that is new for MCU 2. Uh, vehicle, again here, I don't think that there's anything different. Display, that looks pretty much the same to me. Trips, no different. Okay, something just happened there. <laughs> uh, navigation, this looks the same to me. Security and safety, no change. Service, I wanna say that there's no change here either. It's it's all starting to blur in. It's, it's really freaky to think about at MCU one last week and MCU two this week and trying to recall what the differences are. I might have to go and look at uh, some of my older videos. And software, um, there's nothing, nothing new here either. So that's it. That's a look at the controls. Let's take a look at the features. So the first thing that I want to bring to your attention is just how nicely and smooth this thing scrolls. It really is like a modern uh, Model X or Model S, like I'm talking about 2018, late 2018 and above. And we've got... Uh, fire truck there i'm actually at the uh i'm at the fire station so oh well i'm out of everyone's way yeah so fluid so fluid uh just like a modern tesla if you bought one today whether it's an sx or y or three um no lag whatsoever let's do a voice command navigate to cn tower And you can see it just loads super quick. Um, look at that. So pinch to zoom, I zoom way in. And look how quickly the map loads and the fluidity of the scrolling. That's pretty awesome. Really, really, this, this to me is, you know, <laughs> it's quite a bit of cash to actually do the upgrade. Uh, I was gonna save this for the conclusion, but it's, 3,300 Canadian. I I only paid 2,900 Canadian because I got grandfathered into the price before it increased uh, July 1st. So, you know, knocking on something, I was pretty lucky on my part. Um, but it's quite a bit of money. And if you want to replace your screen, it's another $400 on top of that. So, yeah, it, it is a lot of money. But to justify that expense, I mean, one of the things to me is just the fluidity of all of the interactions with the vehicle now. To me, that's that's worth the money. I know I'm gonna be keeping this car at least another three years. So if you do the math, you know, investment over the next three years, um, for me, it's like a thousand bucks a year. Uh, yeah, I have no problem with that to get the fluidity of this, uh, of this system. But also too, let's take a look at the features because those are great as well. So uh, we know that, oops, that's the wrong one the entertainment features, the arcade is with the MC1, you do get some games, but you don't get any of the, I'm gonna <laughs> wait for this uh, fire truck to, alrighty then, uh, hopefully uh, nothing too serious. Where was I? Oh yes, so with MCU2, you get really all of the graphic intense games that that are really, really cool. So you've got your Fallout Shelter, Cuphead, uh, Beach Buggy Racing 2. If you're if you're into games, you know, pass your time while you're waiting for somebody or something like that, this is like absolutely awesome. I can't stress that enough. But <laughs> you have another option with MCU 2 now for your entertainment. You get Netflix, you get YouTube, you get Twitch. Uh, depending where you are in the world, you might get other stuff. I know that my friends down 
uh, south in the U.S. get Hulu and who knows, God knows what they get. They get all the cool stuff. But anyhow, um, you have many more entertainment features here, which is super cool. The next thing that jumped out uh, at me in terms of the uh, new features was with the camera system and the dash cam and the ability to save footage and launch the viewer uh, to play back your footage uh, immediately. You have to be in park to do it, obviously, but uh, this was not available in MCU One. So this is a very welcome um, up upgrade in features. And then uh, lastly, before we get started on the drive, where we'll take a look at some of the visualizations, if you put her in reverse, we now get the side view cameras with MCU2. So to me, that's also another super use, useful feature. Uh, I'm super happy about it. I'm pro I probably missed something. Let me know in the comments, but that's a quick overview of the settings, the features, and, and the fluidity of the display. Now we're going to go for a drive and we're going to take a look at those visualizations and um, I'll let you know where I think they're different. All right, so what we're looking for on this part of the overview of the features is we're going to be looking at the visualizations on the screen that's behind the steering wheel, the driver's screen. I'm not sure exactly what you call it, but that's what I call it. <laughs> All right. Um, In 200 meters, turn left onto no, the I guess street. we're still going to CN Tower. Let me cancel that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the visualizations. Okay, um, so we're looking in the center screen here. We've got the traffic lights. So what's different here? Oh, we got traffic cones. Okay, that was not there before. Um, looks like we got a garbage pail, but there isn't one. It's actually a transformer. Or actually, maybe that is a transformer. No, it looks like a garbage pail, but it's actually a transformer. The traffic lights are bigger. So the graphics for the traffic lights are 100% uh, those are bigger than uh, than an MCU one, which was which is really great because if you look at I did a video not too long ago with MCU one and the Model X and the traffic lights were very hard to see. I was surprised when I played it back on on video when I was editing it. Wow, these are really small traffic lights, so they're bigger, which is really great, easier to see. Okay. Um, the visuals in the center part of the screen there, they seem to be uh, higher res in, in the way that the graphics are rendered. The arrows um, for the directions, you know, it's funny. I, I really can't remember if those arrows were there previously. Someone's gonna have to help me out. It still has MCU, uh, MCU one. All right, so actually, you know, I am going to start a destination here just so we can get the map on the left-hand side. Navigate to CN Tower. And I'm going to put her into autopilot. All right, so there's definitely... On the maps on the left hand side and the way it transitions into the rest of the screen, I want to say that that is different. It just looks better. It's um, you know, more modern. Uh, just visually, it looks, I think it just looks better. I know that that's not very quantifiable. It's kind of subjective, but it's just more refined. And I swear it's it, it just looks crisper. All right, let's see what happens with these oncoming vehicles here. Not sure there's a lot of change there. Like I said, maybe the rendering is a little crisper. We're going to get on the highway coming up here, and hopefully it's going to show uh, some more detail. I think we're going to see more lanes and more information. Uh, 
that pop-up looks a lot crisper to me. Okay, stopping for traffic control. Uh, that's not new, that was there previously. I actually did not have to tap, I was about to, I did not tap the accelerator there car in front of us so that's why it's continuing through the intersection now, I'm not expecting it to enter the freeway by itself although I would be pleasantly surprised no I'm going to have to do that okay Wow, okay, it's really taking this corner. Jeez, okay, let me take it out of autopilot for a moment. Uh, that was a little intense. Yes, 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 I know I'm over the line, yes. Okay. Let's get on to the freeway. I'm gonna throw it back into autopilot. on navigate on autopilot just as a little aside um, I, I normally drive the model 3 and my wife drives this model X and whenever I drive the model X I'm like just blown away by how um, how much faster it feels than the model 3 I have the rear-wheel drive version of the model 3 and the way that it in the Model X, it just feels like there's so much more torque. You get thrown into the back of your of your seat, and I kind of miss that. <laughs> so, anyhow, all right, let's get back to uh, the visualization. So, yes, we have um, you know nice crisp lanes there. Let me turn on the signal here to switch lanes. Uh, very smooth. I I, I want to say that there's that the graphics are different. <laughs> They're just just crisper, more refined. Let's change lanes again. Now, I am expecting to hit some pretty significant traffic. It's it's kind of, it's not a long weekend in Canada, but it kind of is because next weekend's a long weekend. And our holiday is called um, Labor Day. And it usually falls on the first, I want to say, yeah, the first Monday of September. And it just so happens that this is the, it's kind of weird how it's landed. It's, it's the first Monday of September is going to be on the 7th, I think, or something like that, or the 8th. So it's really falling late uh, this year. And that's why I think it's good. there's going to be so much traffic because everybody is going where they're going this week and maybe taking an extended um, vacation just by virtue of the way the holiday is landing this year. Okay, um, wow, chevrons. Okay, that, I, that was definitely, if you look at the lane to my left, there are chevrons there. Um, I have not seen that. I've not seen that on my Model 3 either. Um, that was very interesting and now they're gone. I'm gonna have to, I have to look that up. I, I don't, I've, this is the first time I've seen any type of chevrons. Um, in a lane so if you've seen that before let me know in the comments if you know what it is I bet you my buddy Ruben Ruben what is that tell me <laughs> if anyone's gonna know it's him and this guy's a genius he knows like everything about the Tesla okay um, yeah Ruben you should have a YouTube channel do you have a YouTube YouTube that YouTube channel let me know because <laughs> I got to subscribe okay um, yes we just saw some more cones uh, let's see if this sign shows up Nope, no, uh, no love for that sign on the right. 
So I am seeing some different things. I mean, I'm seeing very familiar, but I am seeing some, I, I would call it familiar plus, right? Familiar, but, but more. Um, and uh, you know, I'm gonna use the word again, crisper. It's just, everything looks crisper to me. So I think uh, that's pretty much it here at this point. I, I'm not sure what else um, to show you. I really haven't, because of COVID, I'm just not doing a lot of driving and um, I'm probably missing something because I'm not doing a lot of driving. And like I said, just hit me up in the comments and, and let me know what I've missed because I'd like to know too. <laughs> 3,300 Canadian dollars, 2,500 United States dollars for the MCU2 upgrade. Is that something you would ever consider doing based on what you saw here today? Let me know in the comments. Hit that like button, uh, hit the subscribe button. As always, thank you for hanging out with me. Tesla Canuck, over now. Thank you.